So I want to bring something to your attention today. You may or may not know this, but if you get a re new refrigerator and you happen to read the manual, I, I know most people probably don't do that, you may come across a line not to be operated in an unheated space, like a garage or a, an unheated RV. But they don't go into usually any details as to why not. Well, I want to explain why. Because uh, this is the refrigerator we put in, uh, was it almost a, a year and a half ago? Great, great RV refrigerator. We got rid of the old Norcold, put in this uh, Harrier, higher, I don't know how you pronounce the crazy thing. But it's been doing an awesome job. It's been running since I, since I plugged it up. And you see that in the freezer is minus 11, about 40 degrees in the fridge. And it, it cycles back and forth uh, from 35 to 40. It does a good job. But uh, the reason you have a problem with these refrigerators, uh, if you have it in an unheated space, is the the fact that the thermostat is only located in the refrigerator. So the, the thermostat cycles the compressor on and off is right here. So it's always monitoring the temperature in the refrigerator. So as long as the refrigerator is happy, the compressor will never come on. Now if you're in a house and you're 70 degrees, the ambient temperature around the refrigerator is always, it's always fighting it so it's cycling on and off. But if you get a situation you put a refrigerator out in the garage, and that garage temperature falls below 55, 50 degrees. At that point, the ambient temperature around the refrigerator is kind of cool. Let's say if it's even down in the 40s, the refrigerator is going to be happy. So the thermostat will never en engage the compressor. So over a day or so, then the freezer and the refrigerator will both equalize and be the same temperature. So I did some experiments uh, while we were in Florida now, but back when we was in Kentucky a couple months ago through November, November and December, You'll see all these numbers here. That's, that's for over about the two month time I kept monitoring the temperature because I keep the RV in an unheated garage and I don't have any heat in the, in the RV. So the temperature was fluctuating all the time. And I noticed, I, I noted any time we went above, whenever the freezer went above freezing, because when that happens, any food you got in there is going to thaw out and ruin and probably be a danger to your health. But the, like the tipping point is about 55 degrees. So even in your house, if you go away on vacation or something other in the wintertime, you go, to, go down the floor for two or three months, if you set your temperature in your house down to 50 degrees, there's a very good likely possibility your freezer will, will thaw out. So house temperatures, RV temperatures, anything should be set at probably about a minimum of around 60 degrees, especially no less than 55. Because you see here, when the, when the RV, what I would do every couple of days, I'd walk in and check the temperature. And then I'd come down here and write it down. And you'll notice when, when as it got colder, of course it kept getting getting worse. But 55 degrees, you can see we got we hit, we hit 33 degrees in the in the refrigerator. At 47 degrees in the RV, the freezer went went up to 36. And uh, so the highest temperature you can see here at 46 degrees in the RV. One day I found 41 degrees in the freezer. And the cool thing about this thermometer, I want to point this thing out too. This is great for RVers um, because it monitors your temperature, but more more so than that, it monitors the high and the low. So you can see here the highest temperature recorded in the freezer is 45 degrees. But the lowest temperature was 24. Now the reason why it was so cold, and I got other footage I'm gonna put in front of this. So I may repeat myself some in my experimentation in order to trick it to to keep it warm. I took me a little extension cord put this 10 watt light bulb and that was just right but initially I tried a 40 watt bulb and that was too much it generated too much heat and so that 40 watt bulb was making the compressor run constantly so that's what drove the freezer down to minus 24 degrees but when I put a 10 watt bulb in the refrigerator it seemed to work just fine um, but I, I love this thermostat because you is I've always had thermometers in the refrigerator so I can monitor watch the temperature but I didn't realize how handy it is just to be able to walk by and to see what's going on. And it has an alarm function. You can set it. I'll put a link to this cool thermostat. It's really great, but you can put an alarm on there. So if your temperature goes too hot, too high, thawing out your food, the alarm will go off. I think it's pretty cool. Now, if you can't afford a thermostat or don't want something like that on your refrigerator, you can do what I used to do, and I still do, is put a, put a uh, ice cube in a zip bag, a Ziploc bag. And if you ever come back to your free open up your refrigerator and you see your ice cube has turned into a flat piece of ice like this, then you'll know at some point in time the freezer has thawed out and your food is probably no good or can't be trusted. So that's a that's another easy way you can do that. But I really like being able to walk by and see what's going on. Oh and let me show you one more thing. 
you know, before we had the uh, no cold refrigerator, and of course, you know, the slang is no cold, never cold, and ice cream was never very hard. But look, like a rock. So um, we're, we're loving this little residential fridge because it keeps everything really cold, regardless if it's 95 or 100 degrees in the RV. It still does a great job. So I'm gonna put this footage in front of the old footage that I did back uh, a couple months ago. But I wanted to point out there are there is another option. Um, but I don't really trust it so much. They make these little devices here you can put inside your, uh, wrap around your thermostat. But if you look at some of the reviews, they, um, it's got some bad reviews where they like, looks like they, they overheat and melt the plastic. And so there might be a little bit of a fire hazard there. So I kind of like the light bulb uh, ideal, just simple. And a little 10 watt bulb will, will kind of do the same thing and, and keep, everything, keep everything happy. And you know there's another scenario that could also happen. Say for instance you're gone for a month or so from your house. Uh, you, you're, you're wintering down in Florida and the power is off for a day or two. And maybe you don't, don't even know about it. But during that time, your refrigerator, everything is thawed out. But then the power comes back on and everything is refrozen. With this thermometer that I have up there, you can come back home, you'll look at it, you'll see the maximum temperature. So you'll know, let me show you. So if you come back from vacation and you look here at the max temperature and you say, holy crap, that freezer got up to 45 degrees, the refrigerator got up to 54 at some point in time, you say, well, I can't trust the fruit food that's in there. So you have to throw it all out. So it's a great little device to have. I'll put a link to it. So, all right, so I guess I'll end here and we'll go back to the, uh, I'll show you the original footage I made. All right, so I'm still experimenting with my new thermo thermometer here and my ice cubes. And I'm going to show you what's going on. So at the, at the moment, outside, it's like 18 degrees. Okay, inside the RV, it's 37. And I haven't winterized it yet. I plan on, I don't want to winterize it because hopefully we'll be heading to Florida soon. So, uh, But tomorrow we're going to be back up in the 50s. So here's my test. I'm going to try to prove this to you. Uh, you know, how, what can happen is with these refrigerators, how they equalize out. So I'm going to show you that as the temperature starts to rise, the my freezer will end up being the same temperature as a refrigerator so oops so like i mentioned before so I, so tonight i'm gonna take this food out so what's what's the temperature right now we got minus one in the freezer 41 in the fridge which is which is ideal that's my new residential fridge i put in well, about over a year now and it hasn't been unplugged it's been running ever since but you got to be mindful when it starts cooling off the freezer will equalize with the fridge so I'm going to take this stuff out because I know what's going to happen. So I'm going to take this food out because I don't want nothing to ruin. I'll take it in the house. And then my next step, because remember I'm, tr I'm tricking it here with this light bulb. Uh, I'm gonna, i got to find out exactly how many watts it is. It's maybe 25 watts. I'll hook my kilowatt meter to it to find out for sure. But this little light bulb is just enough to trick the thermostat into kicking on and off. Remember, the only thermostat is in the refrigerator. There's no thermostat in the, refri in the freezer. So that's why what will happen as the temperature begins to rise in the RV when it gets about around 45, 50 degrees, oops, the refrigerator is going to be happy. So it's, the compressor will no, no longer come on. And then you'll notice the freezer temperature will rise. And if I had meat and stuff in here, it would ruin. And then it would may refreeze later. And that cause, may have caused some health issues. So my goal is now we're going to take the light out. Get it out of the way. Um, I'll take the food out, put it in the house, and then uh, I'll come back uh, tomorrow uh, or next day as the temperatures warm up and monitor these temperatures. And I think I'll be able to prove to you and show you that uh, that the freezer will equalize the same temperature as the fridge. So let the experiment continue. Well, while it was on my mind, I stopped to measure the wattage on this little bulb. And I was surprised, check this out, it's only pulling 9.9 .9. so that's a 10 watt light bulb heck i didn't know they made 10 watt light bulbs so it takes very little uh heat to trick the refrigerator into working properly so a 10 watt bulb is what you need i don't know if i out where you can buy 10 watt bulbs this came from, from a harbor freight setup i got i got you know, i got those uh, i'll show you what i got that came with it these string of lights right there they came with those string of lights uh, they're kind of made for hanging out outside at night you know run your porch for soft light. So I had a whole bunch of these left over. But it's perfect uh, light bulb for doing your refrigerator like that. Now, 
Now here is a 43 watt bulb and I screwed it in and it does read exactly 43 watts on the kilowatt meter. But that's too much, too much, generates too much heat because the compressor, the refrigerator is running constantly. In fact, when I, as a test, I did this earlier, when I put that bulb in there, the crazy freezer, it was 15 below zero because the compressor wouldn't shut off. It just kept getting colder and colder. So, all right, so now we know exactly a 10 watt bulb will do what you need to do. All right, so all the fruit stuff's out of the refrigerator. I'll, put in just, I'll just put in a fresh ice cube so it's not melted at all. And of course, here's an example. Here's what happens when your freezer gets above freezing. That's your warning sign. If, if you come back and you see this, you know something's happened and you can't trust your food that's in your freezer. So it's a handy little trick to do. Uh, this here actually, I think this happened uh, a week or so ago when I was doing some pre-tests pre and I didn't have the light bulb in there. And you can see how it just started. Let me just it. Can you tell? It just started to melt. See, it's got the flat spot on it. It should be rounded. There it is. So it just started to melt a little bit. Um, and then the, then the refrigerator kicked on. But you see, you know, it probably got up, the freezer probably got up to 40 degrees or something before it, uh, the refrigerator kicked on and pulled the temperature back down. But now I've got a fresh cube in here. We'll turn it up like that. And we'll wait as the temperatures warm up in the RV in the next day or two. And we'll just see what happens. All right, it's the next day. See a good example? The refrigerator temperature is 42. Now the freezer has risen to 36. It's, it's time starting to equalize. Because you see the inside of the RV is 48 degrees. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I started a little chart here. I'm going to try to monitor this for a few days and try to find out where the sweet point is or sweet spot. Uh, like, you know, like you know, maybe 50 degrees, where we got to be mindful. At, at what point do we know we're going to start getting in trouble? So maybe you'll know what temperature you need to keep your RV at all times or put in a bulb and a light bulb in the fridge to uh, keep this from happening. So more testing, more testing. Oh yeah, so I forgot to show you this, the most important thing, because the freezer is 38 degrees. And if you notice, the ice cube is no longer an ice cube anymore. Just a little bit left of him. So, uh, you know, that's that piece, you know, that's, no, that was that flat piece of ice. That's what it ends up doing. So that's a good little test. Keep your little ice cube in there and you happen to get, get your, look at your Ziploc bag and you no, long, no longer have an ice cube then you know something's bad went wrong and you can't trust the food that's in your freezer. Okay, well, I'm finally about ready to up upload this video. It's uh, been testing this thermometer now uh, for five months. Now we got in October, it's now Ma March, and it's still running on its original batteries. But one thing I wanted to point out, this is a video here from Amazon. I'll put a link to it. Um, but it has that built-in alarm function. That's pretty cool. So that's really nice. You come back on vacation and you can see if your temperatures have maxed out. You know at some point in time the, the food is now spoiled and no, no, no longer any good in your refrigerator. Or if your compressor fails or something like that, you wake up in the morning, you got this alarm going off, you know to get your refrigerator checked out and see what happened. But uh, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you learned something. I learned a lot experimenting with this. But bottom line, looks like we need to keep the ambient temperature in a house, garage, RV, at least the minimum of 60 degrees. If you get anything like my experiment showed, if you hit 55 degrees, you're most likely going to risk uh, the food going bad in your, in your fridge, not in your refrigerator, but at least in your freezer. Anything in the freezer will fall out if you hit the 55 degree mark ambient temperature. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. See you. Bye.